Hey everyone, it's Matt, and today I am going to be unboxing and trying out something I have been waiting a long time for, and that something Inside of this is something that you can probably already guess from the thumbnail and title, but it is a little game console called the Playdate. Now, as for what the Playdate is, if you're not already familiar with it, I will explain. But first, let's start taking it out of the box. So Anyway, let's go for it. paper and bubble wrap might make some nice ASMR sounds. Hopefully I was right and you agree, but I'll continue slowly unboxing this. That's some real nice bubble wrap if you ask me. Maybe I'm misremembering, but anyway. Okay, so here we have it. The package for the Playdate. And as you can tell from the package itself, the Playdate is rather small, maybe a little bit bigger than a post it note if the size of the diagram on the front is actual size. But based on the pictures and videos I've seen, it seems like that's probably the case. It's actual size or close to it. But before I tear the plastic off of this, let me just read all sides of the box. So, of course, we just have the Playdate with the Playdate logo on the front. On the top, we have another Playdate logo. On the left side, we have the barcode and regulatory information, as well as the model Playdate PDU-Y-01. And we have, uh, it says, made in Malaysia. Need help? Visit play.date slash help. And uh, you might be able to hear it's a little windy outside. I do apologize if that is distracting. On the right side, we have another barcode, this one on a sticker. 
and it says play date 2020 on the bottom is another play date logo nothing surprising there and on the back we have some text so I will read that it says we made a play date just for fun this little handheld game system fits perfectly in a pocket. The screen is black and white. The buttons feel great. And the flip-out crank, yes, gives games a whole new spin. But the best part, Playdate has a whole world of original gaming surprises waiting to be delivered directly to you. Let's have some fun. Made by Panic in cooperation with Teenage Engineering. And if you're not familiar with Panic or Teenage Engineering, you may be familiar with some stuff they've made. Panic is known for uh, mostly software. Yeah, up until this, I believe it's entirely been a software company. They've made some Mac apps like Nova, a code editor, and published games such as Firewatch and Untitled Goose Game. And Teenage Engineering is a company that makes some pretty interesting uh, products in terms of design and unique quirky materials and all that. They primarily make things like synthesizers and audio equipment, but they sometimes get But this is primarily a Panic product. I believe it was made as part of one of their recent anniversaries. As a fun little project that grew into something bigger than they were expecting. But anyway, to answer the question of what exactly Playdate is, it is a small little handheld gaming device with a one bit screen, meaning every pixel is either black or white. There's no grayscale. And there's also no backlight for a decidedly retro feel. But before you decide that the lack of a backlight is a deal breaker, it's important to note that this, from what I've seen, is actually much more legible in every lighting situation than something like an old Game Boy. It has a very reflective surface on the screen, so it picks up even small amounts of light. And they say you can play it by candlelight. But we'll see about that. But one other thing worth noting is it has something you've never seen on a gaming console. speed and all that depending on the game and uh, I guess the last important thing to mention before I stop procrastinating on opening this is that it comes with 24 games that are delivered to you two games per week starting when you unbox yours and they are mystery games. You don't know what you're getting ahead of time unless you look it up. So it's kind of like having a little Christmas present with new video games each week for 12 weeks. And I found that to be pretty fun and exciting. It is a very quirky, sort of nostalgic mix of modern and old. And that really appealed to me. It's not necessarily Switch Lite, which is $200. This is $180 and doesn't do nearly as much, but if you're into this kind of quirky, niche uh, gaming gadget type of thing, like I am, it could be pretty fun and appealing. But anyway, let me stop procrastinating and open up the box so we can actually see it and try it out.
off. Let's open the box. snug in place inside the box as you can see it here. I uh, want to be careful not to tip this too far forward and have it fall out just in case it's not nice and snug in there but as you can see we have the console itself and a little accessory thing that says have fun. So first let's take out the accessory thing because we'll get to what we really want to focus on in a moment. Let's just get it out of the way. So here is the have fun accessory sleeve. And it really is only one accessory as far as I know. And that is a little yellow USB-C charging cable that you, of course, use to charge it. Nothing too surprising there. And under that, we have a little quick start guide. times. If nothing happens, first charge your playdate with the included USB cable. And I'm not going to read this whole manual, but you get the idea. It's basic tips and warranty type stuff, I assume. But with that out of the way, it appears the only thing left is the playdate itself which I'm very curious to see how it feels in the hand because it looks like nothing else. Here it comes. Oh wow, that is heavier than I expected. It feels very well built. It's dense. You can tell they packed a lot into a tiny frame here. Yeah. I like how that feels a lot. And here, let's see how the buttons and D-pad sound. Nice and clicky. So, to give you uh, some information on the layout of the device, we have, of course, the D-pad here. The B button, an A button, and a lock slash power button on the top with a little light that I believe flashes when your new games are downloaded each week. And you can sideload games that other people have made as well and make your own games. It comes with its own SDK for development. I believe this here is a menu button. And then we have the real star of the show, the crank. Oh yeah. Doesn't really make much sound, but as you can see, it does crank. And that is a very satisfying feeling. It's got a nice build quality, it feels sturdy, and it's got just the right amount of resistance to not be tiring to use, but not feel like it's gonna flap everywhere. You can tell they put a lot of thought into how this thing feels, and I appreciate that. And there's the charging port, as well as the headphone jack, and I believe a microphone on the bottom. I think that's the speaker. But yeah, uh, I think I read it that they expect many playdates, at least at first, to come with dead batteries out of the box, because the initial batch, which mine is a part of, was sitting in a warehouse longer than they expected, and so the batteries might be dead. So I'm going to triple click this power button and 
see if it turns on. And whether or not it turns on, the next thing you're going to see is a different angle of me starting it up. So, how about it? Let's see what happens here. Nope. Okay, I'm going to go charge it and then finish recording the rest of this video. Until then, Okay, so with that fun little intro out of the way, it presents to you the first two games of Season 1. Back 
backwards, you immediately fail. And you have three attempts per game before you get your score. score so far. Yeah. Alright, so I think you get the idea. That's a fun game. There's not too much substance to it, but it's addictive in that high score chasing way that a lot of mobile games are, so. As this is a device intended to be brought places and used to kill time, I think it's great for that purpose. Uh, the games that are coming out in Season 1 are very varied from what I've seen. Some of them are very simple and others are much more involved, so if you're not a fan of one, you might be a much bigger fan of others. And this game, Casual Murder, is very different from White Water Wipeout. This is what I would kind of call a mini RPG of sorts, where you have to take photographs of birds, and it's a little bit like Pokemon where you're kind of trying to catch them all. So to show you that from the beginning, I'm going to go to a new game here, and I'll just show you the beginning moments. Well kid, here we are, your new digs. your stuff in, so you're all set. You're a pretty brave kid moving to a town like this. Do you even know anything about bird photography? You're gonna have a rough time here if you can't at least handle the basics. You got a camera on that phone, right? There's a bobby sitting around here somewhere. See if you can snap it for me. So, this game has very tiny graphics, so let me get a little closer here. Let's see if that focuses. Yeah. Okay, so if we walk around, we see the first bird we need to take a photo of. It's a tiny. But if we hit A, we bring up my phone, just move it around here, and use the crank to focus. Once it is in focus, take a picture. Ta-da! Black-bodied Bobby. I can't read that tiny text from here. Let me see here. These cuties hang around and fly onto houses. They're not even from bird town. To be honest, they can be a nuisance, but I think they're still birds. Maybe I like them anyway. Alright, so that's the first bird. 
and I believe there's 26 or 27 birds that you can find. Come on, focus, you can do it. Not sure why my camera's not focusing. Okay, there we go. All right, so I got the first bird. Did you manage to get it? Let's have a look. Whoa, you got him. Nice work, boy. Oh, sounds like somebody needs to get moving. Hey, yo, this here is Moto's GoCo, where we're pretty good at moving because lifting stuff isn't that hard for us on account of our muscles. Moto here, bad roommate. Gonna leave immediately. Left dishes in the sink. Never installed the air conditioner. Just sitting around. Listen, you find a spot to hunker. I'm on my way. Well, kid, I've got to go deal with a ripper of a moving emergency, but do me a favor, huh? Trip's on me, but I need you to help me out with something. I've got this. Well, there's someone I like, okay. Name's Maggie. I want you to give her this package I found and tell her it's from me. It's a special thing, okay? Don't go losing it. Just follow the road there and head over the bridge. You can't miss her place. And hey, watch out for bad birders. Hey, you got a package that I can give to Maggie. And yeah, I'll show you just a little bit more of this, but you kind of get the idea. One of those old school RPGs. My milk is past the expiration date, but I just moved in. There's a lot of little stuff you can interact with and read about. And the dialogue's actually pretty funny at times. I've played a, a little while this before. But yes, a very cute and charming game where you take photos of birds. Like this one.